Welcome to Marlins Way, where we find Lone Depot Park. We've got open-air baseball for you on the show. It's the Colorado Rockies taking on the Miami Marlins. First pitch coming at you right after the break. So just about set now and towing the slab, Braxton Garrett. What do we have on him? Well, he comes at hitters with a five-pitch mix, so for him, it's always interesting to see how he utilizes those weapons. He may lean on Moving one or two pitches Colorado, depending on how things are going and how things are there. working, but if he can control four right. or even five of those offerings, look out, hitters. It's going to be a tough day. He's really going to be able to keep those guys off balance. Charlie Blackman leading things off and takes a strike. And he'll one. And a pop-up. Right side. Foul territory. Bell makes the catch. And there's one gone. Here's Bud Black's lineup for the Colorado Rockies. Now it's Brendan Rodgers. Fouled off left side. pitch and there's the strike swings through it and that's a strikeout just indecisive in that at bat he couldn't commit to the slider tried to sit in between just not able to put the bat on the ball now here's Nolan Jones. And that's in for a strike. Three. Struck him out looking. Rockies are down quietly. Now the Marlins will see what they can do. No score. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at the ballpark, getting the nod in this one. Connor Siebel. What should we keep an eye on here? Well, he doesn't have overpowering stuff, so it's important that he finds his rhythm early. I think the easiest thing for him is to trust that catcher. Catcher's been in the league a long time. He knows these hitters. Whatever fingers he puts down, you nod the head and you throw that pitch. And here it comes. Into center and a base hit. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already, his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. Jorge Soler up at the plate. Run around the goal. Hauls it in for the out. Now a throw to first, and he won't get back in time. It's a double play. Batting third, the first baseman. And now the switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. Shoots a line drive single into right center. Solid swing from start to end. On time with everything. Really good balance. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. Runner at first with two away. Jazz Chisholm Jr. digs in now. Steel. 
Run around the goal. That one ripped. That's down. One hops off the wall. Bell rounds third, headed for the plate. Now he stops, and he's able to get back into third. Back-to-back -back base hits. Put a pretty good jolt into that one. Great swing, nice balance, and weight transfer. And he got it to drop in out there in the deep part of the field. A chance now to take the lead, and at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. So two on with two away. And at the plate for Miami, Jake Berger. Got to be careful with a slugger like this because he can turn it into a three-run game in the blink of an eye. Here's the pitch. Both runners on the move. Now a screamer into the outfield. And it is gone! That one felt good. And just like that, they're out front. It's 3-0. When you're working with this kind of velocity, so critical that you move the ball around, work quickly, and make sure that you keep that hitter off balance. Clearly not fooled by the location or the velocity. He was all over that fastball. And here is Brian De La Cruz. Ripped on a line to center. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that is the third out of the inning. But the Marlins get three on the homer. It's now 3-0. Back here at Lone Depot Park. New inning getting started. Now here is Chris Bryant. The Rockies in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the laid off man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. That misses the zone, and that is ball one. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Next offering is fouled back. Well, Chris, baseball fans remember Chris Bryant winning the World Series in 2016, but Cub fans still remember Bryant's throw across the diamond to make it official. He recorded the final out in that rainy Game 7. The 1-1 is fouled off. The 1-2. And there's a the ball. Fly ball, center field. Chisholm under it. Puts it away for the out. That is it. The third base. Ryan McMahon steps to the plate. Ryan. And when you talk about McMahon. elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Stud. When you look at players like this, you play that hot corner. Got to be pretty courageous over there with the way balls come off the bat. That's the kind of guy that every year you expect him to be in the all-star game and have a gold glove, if not a platinum glove. Hey. And that one is in for a strike. So what are the skills you look for that make a really good defensive third baseman that elite? Well, Boog, one of the things I think about immediately are just the feet. Does he have good feet? Is he able to quickly react? And when you have good feet, you've got soft hands. And soft hand defend. And now here is Elauris Montero. That's to third. Knocks it down. In there safely. That is seven. The shortstop, Ezekiel Tova. Ezekiel Tovar digging in for the Rockies. Yeah. And that's in there for strike one. Here's your one. In the dirt. Well done behind the dish. 
Montero off of first with two away. And nope. now two balls and a strike. Swing and a ball popped up. And that's a fair ball. Lead runner around second. The throw in. And he's out. Cut down and that ends the inning. The Rockies strand one. They trail it here 3-0. Tyler Kinley will take over here. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their guys a chance to fight back into the game. Now it's the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. The right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. The pitch. That one misses. And that's ball one. Right-hander deals. Bounced up the middle. Tosses to first. Out on a bang-bang play, but he made it close. Singing, it was tough to tell in live action if the ball actually beat him. So they have decided to challenge the play, and now it's up to the replay umpires in New York to make the call. Here's one more look, Singing. You think they're going to overturn it? I kind of do. Yeah, I think there's a good chance as well. I mean, the more I look at these different angles, the more I'm becoming convinced that he actually beat the throw. So it's turning out to be a pretty good challenge. The decision's been made, and he's safe. So they overturn the call, and they get it right by taking a chance with a challenge. John Birdie at the play. There goes the runner. Swing and a miss. The throw. Tag. And he's out. Well, this is a real momentum killer after the leadoff single. Tried to steal second base on the first pitch. Defense was all over it. Nicely done from behind the plate with the catch and throw. Then a quick tag before he reaches the base. Yo, one. Foul ball. One down, base is empty. And he chases that one. And there's two away. Oh, that pitch wasn't even close to being a strike. And that just goes to show you how defensive hitters can become when they're up against an 0-2 count. You're just hoping for a mistake somewhere near the zone that you can get the bat to, but right there, he was clearly anxious. He was swinging when the ball left the hand. Jacob Stallings stands in here, leaves that one off the inside. Foul ball there. And a ball and two strikes. He caught it behind his back. The throw, and that's a great play for the out. What a play to end the inning. There's no way he saw that into the glove. No, you're absolutely right. All he knew was the grounder was somewhere behind him. Just threw his glove out there, and it stuck. That was pretty cool.
back here in Miami, all set for the start of the inning. So in now for Colorado, Austin wins. And the pitch. And that is in for a strike. And it's 0-1. Way inside, gets out of the way. Oh, that got away from him. And he's going to reach on a hit by pitch to lead off the inning. Well, that one might sting for a bit, but it helps the team and it boosts the OBP boog. Sometimes that trade off is worth it, but you know, sometimes it's not. Brenton Doyle, the next to hit, takes ball one. If you're going to get something going, this is the time to do it. You get the leadoff man on. Everybody's got to look over the shoulder and say, I'm just going to keep the line moving. Don't try to do too much. One, one now. Good eye right there. Runner at first with no outs here. Fouls one off. Two and two. At the belt and fires in the dirt and a full count now. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good secondary lead doesn't have to get away from the catcher. But if you're anticipating based off the trajectory, get yourself in the scoring position. Now batting the designated hitter, Charlie. Here's Blackman. Charlie Blackman. He popped out his first time. Line drive, and that should be extra bases. Wins around third. Throw is offline, and he scores. And now just a two-run deficit. Waste no time there. That was exactly what you're looking to do with the pitch away, especially in that situation. Drive it into the opposite field gap. He got himself two bags on a great swing of the bat. One out, runner at second. Now, here is Brendan Rodgers. Now the Marlins manager out of the dugout, and he'll make a move to the pen. Braxton Garrett won't go any further, and he's responsible for the runner on second, so the book isn't closed on him yet. We'll be right back. New pitcher now, Tanner Scott. These are the spots where levers really make a name for themselves. Late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. And that one moves his feet. And now two and nothing. Appears they're working around him with the base open, Singy. Well, you know these 2-0 counts, Boo. They're just not what they used to be, and we sound like old guys when I say that. But ultimately, this is a strategic game, and you expect to see this type of approach by the pitcher in this situation. Runner leads away at second, and there's ball four. Bell just came apart right there. Four-pitch walk, and the guy at the plate was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. Now the left fielder, Nolan Jones, struck out looking at his first at bat. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself. First oh. offering, and it just misses. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. That misses the zone. Two balls and a strike. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. Out towards left center. Brings it in. And there's two down. Up next for Colorado. 
the right fielder, Chris Bryant. So they're down to their final out. Here's Chris Bryant now. He's 0 for 1. First offering misses the mark. That one missed. Blackman over at second. Rogers at first, two out of the inning. That's in there. The two on. Good eye right there. Get ready for some action here. Good RBI guy at the plate. Runners in scoring position and a hitter's count. Ryan McMahon up next for the Rockies. Ripped into center base hit. Around third. He will score. And now they trail by one. But when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. First and second, two outs. Ryan McMahon digging in. for the Rockies so they turn things over to the righty number 62 and I can't imagine any save is an easy one you're holding a small lead on the scoreboard and you know those hitters are going to give you the best at bats they can so it's always high stress let's see what he's got here to try and close it out watch out that one sails on it and two in scoring position now, thanks to that wild pitch. The 1 0. There's the strike. Back to the mound. It hit him. Catcher coming out to check on him. It looked like it got him on his back leg. So you'll wonder if that might be a problem for him in terms of pushing off the rubber. Yeah, it's a great point, and we'll have to see how he looks. But to me, it appears he's moving pretty well. I think it's just going to sting for a while, but hopefully nothing more. Next to hit for the Rockies, Ball one, no strikes. The pitch. Late on that fastball. It might be time to choke up a little bit, get that front foot down early, maybe even just spread out. He's really late right now. And the next pitch is way outside. Kicks and fires. Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. And now the count filled up three and two. Three, two, two out, runner on first. A lot of movement in the infield. Hitter's got to stay focused on the pitch. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. So they move out in front after a four-run outburst. We head down to the home half of inning number three. It's the Rockies four and the Marlins three. Welcome back, and here comes the closer, Justin Lawrence. And this guy can bring it velocity-wise. Now pitching for the Rockies, number 61, Justin Lawrence. So the batting order turns over. Luis Arise stands in. One for one with a single so far. This guy makes great contact. One of the best in the game at putting bat on ball. 
He's got such quick hands, and he's gaining pitch recognition. That keeps him square to the plate. There's a good chance that his bat stays in the zone a long time, and that produces solid contact consistently. Should be extra bases. And now the tying run is into scoring position. Well, that's how you respond. Leadoff man comes up, gets into scoring position. Now there are several ways that they can get this run across. Runner in scoring position, no outs. And next is the designated hitter, Jorge Soler. That one drilled left field, and that's a fair ball! And now it gets into the corner! The run comes in from second, it's 4-4. He is safe! Such great concentration. Everybody on their feet, knowing that you can come through with a good swing. And there, he doesn't try to do too much. Josh Bell at the plate now. Singled and scored his first time. Next offering popped in the air. Right field. Bryant moves under it. Makes the grab. Runner tags up for third. And he's in safely at third with one out. Now batting. The center fielder. Jack Chisholm Jr. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now doubled his first time up. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. Swung on, belted. That one carry. Out of here. And that ends the game. Wow. He'll circle the bases, and they walk it off. Hitting a walk-off homer is the kind of thing you dream about growing up. You're in the backyard, you're creating the most pressure-packed scenario, and what do you do? You come through with the big swing. Well, he was living a childhood moment right there. Nice swing of the bat, nice win for the team. And this one ends with a final score of 6-4. to four. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chomby saying so long.